Okay, so I'm here with Roger Berry from the University of Leeds here in the UK. Roger, good afternoon and welcome. Uh, thank you for inviting me. This is a fantastic opportunity to uh, talk about what's happened recently and also about the Pico uh, Scope pro uh, product. Okay, super. So, Roger, you and your department at the university bought uh, quite a number of Picoscopes for use in distance learning and, and remote teaching uh, last year when the pandemic hit. So can you tell me a little bit more about you know, what, you, what you did and why? Right, uh, if we put it in some sort of historical context, because um, uh, prior to COVID, uh, we would run uh, generally the lab sessions that we run at the university are two-hour lab sessions. Um, and we're really trying to get the... Um, the first year students up to a certain level, they come from all over the world, uh, so where we need to, they all come with different skill sets, some are already interested in electronics beforehand and done a bit of hobby stuff, but then we're trying to raise the level so that when they come into their second year they're actually at a, a technical level to be able to take on the demands of their second and uh, third year uh, courses so or modules. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but when COVID came along, then uh, we had to rethink how we do this. Now, COVID meant that we had to do remote labs, but of course, uh, our labs uh, in a university are equipped with um, bench power supplies, um, uh, very expensive oscilloscopes and uh, other test equipment. And of course, um, we couldn't pass that equipment out to students because uh, for all sorts of reasons, there's a log logistics reason of trying to get all this equipment all over the world because we have students uh, from China, from Europe, uh, from the Middle East. And so uh, it was really difficult to decide how to approach this. But um, so we had to create, um, first of all, there's the health and safety side. How do we get uh, safe power, uh, power elements to our students? So we designed a special battery board to actually provide the power for different um, uh, uh, um, experiments that we were doing. Mm -hmm. But then uh, we also had to get a piece of equipment like an oscilloscope and also a signal generator. Now, um, with a bit of research, uh, we found out there were a number of products on the market but in fact, from my perspective, um, it was more important the students had something that was rugged, reliable, and actually performed the task not dissimilar to a traditional oscilloscope. And hence the reason the Picoscope was the only product on the market to actually meet that requirement. And so because of that, we bought um, what, 400 uh, Picoscopes. Um, this is a mix of first year and second year work. Uh, so we, all our first year students came in and actually got uh, Picoscopes. So that was over 180 students. And we also had um, my personal students for um, my second year modules. And uh, because of the type of work they were doing, then I was asking uh, that we actually give those students Picoscopes as well. And so a lot of our second year students got Picoscopes as well to okay. develop their skills. Fantastic. Okay, so by buying the Picoscopes, you managed to equip the students with our oscilloscopes that they could use at home uh, that were portable, so devices like this, the 2000 series Picoscopes, are portable, easily shipped, are computer-based, PC-based, mm -hmm. um, but fully function yes. test equipment. Yeah, very good, yeah. excellent. And what was the reception like from, from the students? How, how did they take it and how did they find the remote lab as opposed to being in the laboratory at the university? Well, it was very interesting because um, the <laughs> uh, because we had to do Teams calls to maintain contact with our students, and this is from all over the world, so we would have uh, Teams calls of which my students were phoning in from China, Europe and the UK, because some students were actually based at the University of Leeds and within that area but we had to uh, accommodate all students. So we would have Teams meetings, and it was really interesting because <laughs> one of those meetings, um, a student's um, a box had just arrived at his home as I was doing this Teams call. And so I said to him, oh, would you want to show everybody else what you've got? And he was so excited about <laughs> opening this box with all these goodies inside. Oh. <laughs> so it wasn't just the Picoscope, but it was having all of the other uh, equipment that we had because we had uh, battery power boards, we had uh, development uh, platforms that were also specially developed for their uh, modules. And so they had this whole kit of parts and they really were excited about all of this. So the students actually from that perspective got really excited about having this. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, and over the months, um, because it changed how we actually delivered our modules, I had to totally rewrite the modules mm -hmm. from, um, from a traditional lab perspective where I'd be present to actually monitor students' uh, work and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. 
but this time they had to be totally reworked and so it was about trying to um, get students to perform tasks but then actually also giving them that support to actually say well okay uh, if you didn't manage to do that, then this is hit, this is how it's done. So I did hundreds of videos uh, based on trying to get students to engage, trying to get students to try and work the experiment out for themselves with under guidance, but then also show them that this is what you should have got when you did it. So there was an enormous amount of work from a teaching fellow's perspective of actually creating this environment for the students to actually guide them through the process. But they loved the videos. The response uh, my students gave was absolutely fantastic. It was um, they were they really were engaged. Um, the way in which we communicated during Teams calls uh, was fantastic. They felt fully supported. But you will never get away from the fact that sadly for a lot of students they missed the university experience. So one could argue at the end of it all, students were saying, well, it would have been nice to have been in labs and stuff like this. Um, however. That was a bit of a mix of the fact they had no contact with their friends and the university environment. Because university is not just about the education, it's also about the experience. Yes. Um, so, you know, it's a, so you know, some very positive feedback on, on the remote teaching. But as the world gets back to more like normality post COVID, post pandemic, as we move forward, are there bits of what you were doing with the hybrid and, and remote learning that are going to stay? Well, that's been the fascinating thing for me because I think this has been the best um, thing. I know COVID's been a terrible uh, thing to happen from a worldwide perspective, but from an education perspective, especially in electrical engineering, I actually think it's a been great benefit um, because the thing about labs is they're a limited time frame, and um, the some students engage in labs, others step back. Some people become dominant. It and I, I, I'm sure if anybody's listening to this, they uh, it might be very familiar words. Is that how do you get all students to engage? Well, by having remote labs where students have got everything they need to do these labs, and they are properly guided, and um, so they're given an opportunity to learn, but also to know where things have gone wrong and how to get over those problems. If they're given all that support then their learning is actually much, much better. And I also know from, from certainly from both my LEC 1801 first year uh, modules and my second year modules, the quality of the students coming through is actually a lot better, significantly better, because these labs have been engaged with from a personal level, and I think that's uh, made a massive difference. So, and because of this, and because of the feedback from students, we've actually decided to actually continue this as a standard practice, so all first year students will be getting oscilloscopes to keep throughout their whole term and keep thereafter. Mm -hmm. Because the great thing about the PicoScope is it's, it is not a million miles from a traditional scope, and we're trying to teach students about the real world of electronics and using test equipment, and this is exactly what the PicoScope does. So, you know. So, an uh, interesting point, and very nice to hear the positive feedback. Uh, so picking up on your point there about uh, functionality, so obviously we, we have scopes from, from 10 megahertz uh, all the way through to, to, to 1 gigahertz, and the students learn on software using the, the entry level scopes, the software is actually the same all the way through the real time range, so students are learning on uh, a software platform that will take them into industry. It's, it's not a dead end teaching learning aid, it's actually a real you know, powerful uh, analysis package. Yeah. Well this is why it was chosen because um, without a question of a doubt when, you, um, when we were investigating this and not only just by the physical uh, properties of the Picoscope but you look at the uh, website associated with what the software looks like, it feels like a normal oscilloscope, I don't use the word normal, it's a traditional oscilloscope. Um, and that's what we wanted our students to be able to do. Oscilloscopes, if you understand how oscilloscopes are, how to use an oscilloscope, it doesn't matter whether it be um, a Hewlett Packard, a Tektronix, a Picoscope, all that kind of stuff. It, this is about um, familiarity um, mm -hmm. by students going into industry where they don't know what test equipment they're going to face. Mm -hmm. But the Picoscope is by far the best piece of equipment to be able to introduce them to that world. And actually, a lot of companies now are actually using Picoscopes actually in their industrial environments. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So yes, we, we're not just about teaching and learning tools. We've got products that are used in product design, debug, uh, in test environments, on shop floors, etc. So uh, students come out with a valuable skill set that will enable them to do a, a role in industry. So that, that's fantastic. Really good. So you think the future will be 
part university, part hybrid remote teaching. And you mentioned, obviously, buying Picascopes for students moving forward. Uh, so that, that's here to stay, is it? In my opinion, I'm not the purchaser <laughs> the, the, the decision maker of the university. However, um, for the second year now, we are actually, we've already bought Picascopes for the next um, students coming through. And because of the positivity um, of the learning experience, uh, we see this as a very valid way of moving forwards. And uh, so, in fact, we are creating a hybrid environment because we are actually also providing real labs as well as working from home. Now, it makes it harder from our perspective, from an education perspective, but it does give the students the choice. But we're not asking students to come in and actually use the bench-based equipment that we've got. We're asking students to come in with their picoscopes to come in and use it because um, that's what all the material was based around because uh, you know all the experiments have been done using the picoscope and um, so all the videos are valid. But it's, um, one could argue, why have this very expensive lab equipment when in fact the Picascope does the job anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and also they can pack it all up when they finish, put it in their little box and off they go back home. But it, the great thing about it is they got a choice mm -hmm. rather than these fixed minimum time labs where they can never achieve. Student, student's ability varies hugely. Mm -hmm. And it's unfair that students who are developing their skills are limited by a two hour lab. And let's get rid of all of that. Mm. And as my, in my opinion, um, I think the students just benefit. I think it's a win-win for the student. Ooh, fantastic. Well, thank you ever so much. So it's been really useful to hear of the positive impact that the Picascopes have had on the students uh, and on their way of learning. And uh, it's really nice to hear that you're planning to, to make that a permanent fixture. So uh, really positive and really, really good. So, Roger, thank you very much indeed. That's no, super. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.